So if you're one of the richest families in Australia, who do you turn to to make sure you don't lose it? Well, that man is Miles Collins, an investment director at the Meyer Family Investment Office. He has been speaking to Damon Kitney, who's the Victorian business editor. Damon, the first generation starts it, the second generation builds it, and the third generation gets rid of it, which is the old adage. I mean, is that really true? Um, that's certainly been the, uh, the way we've seen it in history, <laughs> Jackson, and I think one of the great things about what Miles does in his role with the Meyer family office is to stop that happening. Um, and they would ad advise more than 100 of the wealthiest families in the nation about how to best get that next generation engaged in the business, but also giving them the independence to go out and perhaps fail, <laughs> but come back to the fold uh, with lessons and to go on to success eventually. It's uh, one of the greatest challenges, I guess, of wealth, isn't it? It's, uh, it can be a curse and it can be a blessing at the same time. Um, and we've seen in the last 12 months some terrible disputes that have made the headlines. Bob Jane being one of those? Yes, yeah. and involving the, the Reinhardt family is the most famous one, but the, the Mandy family here in Melbourne have had a terrible situation with two generations uh, post the father. So, yeah, Miles's uh, work is really about getting uh, very ingrained in these businesses to work out exactly what the priorities are of the two generations. He was telling me a, a great story of an old patriarch who just had a what we call liquidity event um, where some, some substantial cash had been generated from the business. And his view was that I've made this money, <laughs> I'm not going to make any decisions about it, I want to keep involved in the business. Um, and they can wait, <laughs> essentially. Um, so it's about trying to respect that generation and the fact that they have built the business without shutting out the new one and saying, well, you know, you just wait. And then you end up getting an event where the Patriarch passes and you have chaos. And that's what we're seeing uh, in those two examples that we quoted before. So fascinating sort of business that he's in. Certainly not one rule for everyone. That's his key message. So the trick is to get those that next generation into the business early so they feel like they're on a kind of succession path and a progression path through the business? That's certainly one aspect. But the other two is the, it's about recognising that particularly with Generation Y, they want to go out and do their own thing. They feel uh, a pressure um, to succeed, particularly where they carry the family name. So it's about the patriarch or matriarch, I should say, changing that mindset to say, well, it is okay to fail. We may have to release some capital in this part of the business to say, here's an opportunity for the next generation to make something of it. And you never know, they might actually make something incredible of it. But don't sort of hold it all, all in until it's too late and then as we've seen, when decisions aren't taken and structures aren't put in place, um, that's when things blow up. And is the idea to sort of set them free? So they say, okay, you can do a startup that's totally different from what the old family firm is, but go Absolutely. and give it a go and, and learn on your own in that. Particularly in that if it's a different business stream to the one the family operates. Um, and the theory is that they may well come back to the family business, but with a much broader mindset. As we say, wealth can be a curse as well as, well as an opportunity. And Miles made a very good point that basically from the late teens through to the early 30s for these kids is a really important period where they have to sort of make their own way. And if they haven't made it by that point, or if they haven't got themselves into a senior role in the business, they become basically seriously dependent. And then you get trapped in a situation which does lead to infighting eventually where you have, and we've seen it with these family disputes we mentioned before. Some kids have claimed they've done the hard yards, the others haven't, I'm entitled to this, the other, others see it different, a different way. So yeah, it's, it's one of the fascinating things about sort of family wealth is just trying to manage that transfer. And I guess the other part is of course working with that matriarch or patriarch and actually helping them to to let go because yeah. that's often the hardest part isn't it yeah ab absolutely particularly if they've um you know they're, they're particularly if they're getting old as well as, as often often they are then they're not uh up with sort of the modern world perhaps as what they might have been historically um certainly you know adapting to all the, the new structures that are out there in terms of ways you can structure your wealth and your products those sorts of things which the younger generation are very au fait with that is a real difficult thing and the, the example he quoted before you know of the old patriarch saying well <laughs> I've made this money I'll decide 
how it's done in my time. So yeah, it's a it's a fascinating area, that's for sure. Yeah, that's great. David Kitney, thanks very much. Thanks.